Hi, this is Andreas Moritz, and today I would like to answer a question from Brian Spiritus. And he was wondering if I could speak about sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, he made the statement that there is a lot of disinformation and uh, there are a lot of scare tactics in high schools uh, in the United States and elsewhere that um, scare kids away from having sexual contact uh, at all. And uh, they receive the image that the sex, sex uh, or sexual contact is something that they need to um, you know, stay away from because it is a dirty, negative thing. And uh, he says that perhaps uh, this has more to do with strengthening our immune system rather than uh, trying to find uh, treatments for those various illnesses. And I totally agree with you on this. Uh, I found over the years that uh, sexual, sexually transmitted diseases are in fact uh, indications that the immune system has been depressed, uh, suppressed by previous encounters with uh, strong toxins. I found that vaccines uh, that are given to kids uh, depresses and suppresses the immune system tremendously. Um, that's basically the approach that modern medicine is taking in order to prevent the appearance or the occurrence of uh, infectious diseases, which is very harmful as we now know, since that tremendously increases the risk of developing cancer later in life and many, many other you know, chronic illnesses, which are typically all based on a weakened, suppressed immune system. And uh, there is a lot of scientific uh, evidence now that shows that the immune system of uh, teenagers uh, already um, are the immune systems are very, very weak uh, compared to the immune systems that teenagers had even 30 or 40 years ago. So we are dealing with a lot of contamination uh, through these chemicals that are in vaccines, formaldehyde uh, preservatives, um, adjuvants like aluminum, mercury, and many other uh, you know, things that you know, relate that suppress the immune system or uh, trick the immune system into hyperreaction, such as animal particles um, f you know, from DNA of uh, you know, that are contained uh, in the vaccines. And the other thing is that uh, our food and diet. Uh, that you know, most of the young generation now is eating is uh, also suppressive of the immune system. Uh, it can cause severe gastrointestinal distress, uh, which is now more common than it isn't. And that is because uh, they, the, the young people eat a lot of junk food uh, that includes uh, processed sugars and um, soft drinks, um, artificial sweeteners, uh, preservatives, um, canned foods or frozen foods that often contain PVAs in the plastic uh, packaging and in the lining of uh, the canned goods, the cans. So there is a lot of uh, exposure to toxins which it gradually diminishes the strength of the immune system. In addition, the young people tend to suffer from vitamin D deficiency. They don't get out in the sun as young people used to um, before the modernization of our industry where um, young people used to be more out in the in the fields and uh, helping with the farming of uh, animals and crops. And so nowadays uh, this has changed uh, tremendously uh, to a more 
uh, you know, a living uh, you know, system that uh, makes us you know, be more indoors than outdoors. And so these young people suffer from vitamin D deficiency because of lack of sun exposure. And this also suppresses the immune system. So once a person has a weak suppressed immune system, he is more prone to developing any kind of infection that includes sexually transmitted uh, diseases. And so the, these diseases are harmless to a person who has a strong, a strong healthy immune system. Uh, but the person who doesn't is more prone to developing an infection thereof. And so I would suggest uh, not to vilify these diseases or the germs that uh, yeah, can be transmitted from one person to another. These germs are totally harmless uh, for a person who is healthy and strong. Uh, they are not harmless in a person who isn't. And so the, the focus is really, as you said, more uh, on something outside rather than inside. Uh, we now know that uh, AIDS, which is a, a number of uh, you know, so-called diseases like pneumonia uh, and, and others that are, are called AIDS diseases because they're related to immune deficiency. And uh, the, the particles or the viruses that are blamed for that are HIV 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Uh, whereas in reality, it has been shown that these HIV particles, uh, retroviruses, are not at all uh, the cause of AIDS. Uh, they cannot be held responsible for causing AIDS diseases, but a weak, uh, depressed, or disturbed, disrupted immune system is. And this comes from even the, uh, the main discoverer of uh, the HIV virus, uh, Montagne, uh, who has uh, since then retracted uh, his statement that HIV is responsible for AIDS. He no longer believes that. He says uh, HIV is really harmless uh, as long as the immune system is strong and healthy. And so the focus should be on strengthening the immune system, taking care of the person's diet, uh, have a good uh, amount of uh, hydration in the body, and to make sure that also emotionally there is some balance uh, that stress is known to suppress the immune system as well, that does the, that the person is in the best condition uh, to ward off any kind of infectious diseases, and therefore there is no reason why not to um, indulge in sexual activities. That is part of the growth process. Uh, we all were once very young and we went through our own experiences, uh, sexual encounters, and this didn't turn out to be hazardous to our health and uh, to our well-being. In fact, it made us um, more uh, self-confident and uh, joyful. So I, I don't personally have anything against uh, sexual uh, experiences, and uh, I, I would encourage that young people need to uh, follow their natural instincts in this regard and not follow certain rules and directions that are superimposed on them. Um, there's some, some responsibility, of course, with regard to uh, pregnancies, uh, unwanted pregnancies, but uh, this is another topic altogether. Thank you. Thank you.